it's pretty much the same. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. First, let me start by saying uh, I hope you're staying safe and being well. If you've seen my last couple of videos on this channel, you know that uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now. I'm very aware of it. The reason uh, I really wanted to get back to doing reviews and, and regular scheduled content on this channel is because I needed the normalcy. I needed the routine day-to-day, uh, -day, week to week, and I hope you're along for the ride here. So the two reviews I'm posting today are of trail shoes. Both are on sale and screaming deals right now, but I will also be focusing a lot more on road style shoes and gear like that uh, in the coming weeks, only because it's what we have access to and it's what we're able to do on a regular basis here. So let's get into today's review. You are currently watching my review of the Nike Kyger 6. It is pretty dang similar to the five. Pretty, pretty similar. Also on the channel today, I dropped my review of the Wild Horse 6, which is wildly different than the previous version. Um, I hate myself too. I want you to go watch this review for sure. The link for this is in the description, but for now, stick around and watch my review of the Kyger 6. The shoes in today's reviews were provided by both Nike Trail and Running Warehouse. All opinions are purely my own. I am under no obligation to say anything about any product whatsoever, and I never accept financial compensation for anything that I say in these reviews. It is my opinion, my opinion alone, and this is it. So Nike's been up to some stuff. As you noticed in my Wild Horse 6 review, that shoe is completely different, pretty much from the ground up. Uh, the Kyger, the new version, hasn't changed a lot, uh, which is, a good thing. I think having this shoe stay very similar to what it was in the previous version allows the wild horse to make those changes and be just that different from this shoe, providing you with plenty of alternative rides in, in what you're looking for in a trail shoe. In this case, it's going to be lower to the ground, it's going to be much more ground feel, a little bit of protection, but really this is designed to go fast, be more of a race day shoe, and that is where I find myself liking it more than as a daily trainer. Talking about what is different with the shoe, cosmetic upper changes. Uh, I would say some of the fabric and mesh is more breathable just because it has some more perforations. The welded overlays are in a bit different spot. Some of the graphics are in a different spot. The heel grip hoop is a bit different. Otherwise, grip's pretty much the same. Midsole's the same. Location of zoom, all that pretty much the same. So with all of my reviews, I do like to talk about the things I'd like and dislike about a shoe, starting as always with the things that I like about the Kyger 6 fast. This is one of those shoes when you put it on, it's very slipper-like. It just wants to go fast. Uh, it's going to be perfect for those race day environments of lower distances. I mean, anywhere from five to 20 miles pushing that 20 mile range is going to be difficult. But overall, I'm a fan of this being a race day shoe while the Wild Horse or even the Pegasus Trail is more of the everyday trainer. You put the shoe on, you feel fast, uh, whether or not you are actually running fast. It's certainly a mental side of things. Uh, this is a really fun, fast trail shoe. Grip. Surprisingly, with the same outsole, uh, I'm just continually surprised at how good these shoes grip. The outsole is very similar to what they're showing in the Wild Horse 6 as well. The lugs are an odd shape, beveled on one side, grippy and sharp on the other. But uh, even in inclement conditions, as you can see, this has been through the ringer and back, mud, snow, everything. It's doing pretty well, surprisingly good. So I'll give the Kyger 6 a the thumbs up on the grip department. And finally, fit. So this is one thing I never really had an issue with uh, in the Kyger. It always fit more glove-like or slipper-like, as I mentioned. Tightening down of the midfoot has never been an issue. I think they really have a good combination of lacing, volume. Uh, it, it just makes for a really good tight-fitting shoe that, again, just kind of lends itself to that more racing feel. But the Kyger 6 is not all bagels and cream cheese. There are some things that I dislike. Let's get to those now. Protection. So this is just something I've noticed with this shoe, especially comparing it to its new brother, the Wild Horse 6 and the Pegasus. But uh, you're going to lack a lot of the protection underfoot. If you're running super rocky technical trails, this certainly gives you plenty of flexibility. But with the minimal stack height, uh, you're going to feel pretty much everything you're running over. Even with rock guard elements, outsole elements, that sort of stuff built into the shoe, it's just not going to provide you with an extremely protective feel in a slipper uh, shoe. Vertical volume. So this is something I think I've mentioned in previous Kyger reviews, but just the volume in the upper vertically uh, is reduced. I've had this problem in other shoes as well. But when you have this welded overlay across the toe box and a low volume shoe, your toes and toenails rub up against the top of the upper, causing 
problems from time to time. Uh, when you start to break the shoe in, it becomes less and less noticeable, but it is a problem that many people have had in the Kygers with a lack of vertical volume. You look at something like the new Wild Horse and you'll just immediately notice the volume both vertically and horizontally. Uh, there's just a lot more of it in the Wild Horse. But that's it for dislikes. Um, in conclusion, I'd say the Kyger 6 is going to be a really good race day shoe if you're looking for something with low stack height that you want to feel the ground and just feel like you're running really fast, this is a really good option. But when comparing it to something like the Pegasus Trail or the Wild Horse, both from Nike, I am still leaning heavily into the Wild Horse category, especially now that they're on sale at a price below 100 bucks. Uh, even with these on sale, I mean, you could get one for training and one for racing, but I'm still just gonna be leaning towards the Wild Horse and racing potentially in the Pegasus Trail, uh, just because the Kyger is so reduced when it comes to ground feel and overall volume of the midsole. It used to be my favorite Nike Trail shoe, and it's surprising me to even say that it's kind of moved down the line uh, with now Wild Horse and Pegasus above it. Uh, it's still a good shoe, it's just, it's not what I grab. Let's get more specific. Build quality, uh, they hold up. I think Nike's doing something really good here with their build quality of trail shoes. I haven't had much of an issue with anything pulling apart, seam splitting, none of that. They hold up well. Comfort, the Kyger 6 is probably the least comfortable of the three Nike trail offerings right now. I think the Wild Horse is at the top end. Pegasus is in the middle, but uh, these are certainly less comfortable purely based off of how much stack they have of that React foam. Fit, they're gonna be a more dialed fit. So if you're looking for something super wide, um, these do have some width to them, but you're gonna get a more dialed fit through the midfoot. They'll certainly feel like they're on your foot a bit better and kind of disappear, kind of like a slipper uh, compared to the other shoes. Price, these are coming in at $97 on Running Warehouse right now. I have a link in the description. So these are also under a hundred bucks, which is, uh, it's a crazy deal. I appreciate what Nike's doing here with the coupons and, and making sure that everyone can get a pair of shoes for under hundred bucks right now. Uh, that's a screaming deal. Even if you buy them and knowing you can't use them and want to stash them in the closet. So these and the Wild Horse are on sale. Uh, snag them if you can. And finally, looks. I think it's a really good looking shoe. I thought last version was also quite good looking. I think the color versions of all Kygers these days, uh, they're just so good. They're so awesome. I'm a big fan. Bringing us to our final criteria, is the Kyger 6 a buy, try, or a why? Uh, in my opinion, it's going to be a try because I'm just leaning so heavily towards the Wild Horse 6 and the Pegasus right now, even at these prices, that if you need a race shoe or something that is more minimal, uh, feels more reduced and has more ground feel, this would be the buy for you, but I am leaning towards the Wild Horse for that because it just provides a bit more protection for a bigger guy like me. Bringing us to the end of our review. Uh, question for you, have you run in the new Kyger 6 or any of the previous versions? In the comments of this video, let us know what you think. Don't forget, I've got the review of the Wild Horse 6 also on this channel posted as of today. You can go check it out and uh, we appreciate you watching these videos and subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. But that's it for now. Uh, social media links there. You can go follow us across the board and at the bottom, patreon.com slash the ginger runner is where you can support this channel. We are a small business. And at the $3 level and above, we are doing daily live streams every morning over a cup of coffee. We call it the daily brew. It's something that we just started doing during this crazy time and it's helped us uh, engage with our community and it's helped bring the community together even more. It's been awesome. So if you'd like to join us over at the Patreon site, we'd love to have you join us and we'll see you there. That's it, everybody. Obviously, times are tough for a lot of people and we are aware that trails across the world are closed, shut down. So we encourage you to follow all of your local guidelines, social distance, or as we've been calling it, uh, physical distance. Just make sure you keep that and don't go out there and, and break any rules. We don't want to see that. We don't encourage it at all. And finally, we're going to be continuing to do content on this channel, on Kim's channel over at youtube.com slash mile long legs. So just expect to see videos every week. We're going to continue just cranking them out because it's what we know, it's what we do. And we know a lot of people just need the entertainment right now. So we hope that you are continuing to get entertained. Again, be safe, wash your hands, stay inside, keep your family safe, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll get through this together. And I close every review out with the same phrase, just right now I have to change it because it, we just need to. So train hard, as hard as you want, but keep yourself sane. Virtually race or race hardest when you can, when it's allowed and when races are back. And finally, party the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for more fun. Okay. Thank you.